Bit of an end of season recap today on Locked On Sabres. We'll look ahead to the offseason a little bit and also a little bit towards the Stanley Cup playoffs. A little taste of everything today on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Joe DiBiase and Jordan Hanskin today on the show. Our first show of the off season. It has finally come. But, uh, you know, even though the season uh, ends and it's another year where they miss the playoffs and it's another year where they're not even in a playoff race, uh, I'm, I'm going to miss it. I'm already missing it. It's been two days and I'm already uh, I'm already missing it. Uh, but I think this is going to be a fun off season for us. I think it's the most optimistic we've been in a long time. Yes. I think that is for damn sure. Uh, so um, well, even Taylor we'll Hall, talk- it was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of a little bit, I probably got hyped up. I, don't I, I, I think I was, up. I was drinking the Kool-Aid more originally. Like I was like, Oh well, yeah, they can make the playoffs, you know, of all these things, this, 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 and this go. But, uh, sure. Next year, I think that their expectation should be competing for a playoff spot. That should be their realistic goal. Mm-hmm. We'll talk plenty about next season. Uh, throughout, yeah. Yeah. Throughout the coming months, I mean, everything's going to be. I love this. I love this. Uh, I love off seasons. I love roster building. And when you have a team that you have, you're hopeful about, then I think it's a lot. It's a lot more fun to really go through the roster building exercises trades, free agency, the draft, all that. But we'll look back on the season that was a little bit on today's show. We'll preview the offseason a little bit and also uh, look ahead to the Stanley Cup playoffs a little bit today as well. We are going to get into a series of episodes coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Sabre player exit interviews. We're going to go player by player. We're going to analyze how good they were this season, what the player needs to get better at. Do we see them being a part of the future? contract status, trade potential, et cetera, for, uh, for really uh, all the Sabre players, all that, you know, we could fill a whole episode with. I don't think there's much to talk about with guys like Cody Eakin. Uh, so we're not going to do every single person on the team, but most of them. Uh, so that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. And of course, we will talk plenty uh, about the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, is there a series you're most excited for with the Stanley Cup playoffs? Uh, they begin uh, on Monday night. Uh, For me, it's definitely Toronto and Tampa because just those two teams, both juggernauts, both Stanley Cup contenders in Toronto, it would just be hilarious if they lose in the first round for a six straight year. So for me, it's Toronto, Tampa. Um, Yeah, I I agree with that. I think that that's the the number one marquee watch um, just because it's Toronto failing all the time and they have to play the team that's back-to-back cup champs. Um, I think like sneaky good ones. I think Boston, Carolina will be really good. Um, yep. I think Boston, like they're probably the most fortunate team in the East where they get to go on that side rather than go through the, the Atlantic um, where yep. it's just going to be a bloodbath. Um, the fact that only one of Florida, Tampa and Toronto get to leave is pretty crazy. Um, and don't I think like, those, don't sleep on those capitals. Like, How dare you sleep on Ovechkin? I, I, they're not very good. I don't think they're, they're going to get good. boat race. Um, You're right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think they're that good. Uh, yeah. And like the West, I think is interesting because the Pacific on the flip side is interesting because you got a bunch of teams that never make big runs and yeah. they're all going to be like, one of them has to make it to the third round. Um, and I, I'm, I'm begging for battle for Alberta, uh second round mm. series. I, I need that in my life. Um, so yeah. that's that's what I'll be rooting for out there. And Colorado is just so good. I would be stunned if they don't make it. Yeah, it, it just feels like we're we're just waiting around for the inevitable, which is Colorado and Calgary in the Western Conference Finals, and then Colorado will make it to the Cup Finals. The West seems like it's very easy to predict. I haven't done a bracket challenge yet, but it feels like it's pretty easy to predict. Whereas the East, I mean, Carolina could make the finals or they could lose to Boston in the first round. I wouldn't be surprised either way. Uh, you know, Florida, Florida, Rangers, Pittsburgh, no idea what's going to happen. 
Like, I don't, yeah. I don't the, have any prediction on that. Those are the two teams where I'd be pretty surprised if they made it all the way. But I think for the first round, I think first round, you're right. I mean, I don't know who's going to win that series. I don't think I know. The only series we feel like I think we know who's going to win in the first round in the East is the Florida Washington series. Whereas the West, yeah, I think we're shocked. pretty damn confident. We know Colorado. I think we know Calgary. I feel pretty confident about Minnesota, but that that that's just me. I think that one's probably closer to 50-50. Mm. And then Edmonton, LA, while we might, it's kind of like Pittsburgh, New York, right? Like we don't know who's going to win in round one, but Edmonton and LA are not making it all the way to the finals. So I don't know. The West to me is a little less interesting than the East. Uh, Does no, Edmonton have be- like a, how come Edmonton doesn't have the leaf stigma? I know they made the second round ones, but mm-hmm. it's like, how much, well, how, when does Edmonton, I mean, I know they get criticized by their own media plenty, but like nationally, I feel like everybody's like, oh, way off McDavid and what, Dry's Idol and all that. But it's like, well, when are you yeah. going to do something, you know? So they've lost in the first round. Like if they lost to the Kings, I think that would be, that would be a failure. That would be a failure yeah. if they lost to the Kings. The obvious answer to this, I think, is it's the Toronto media versus the Edmonton market. You know, like there's there's a big disparity there. Toronto is like the biggest market in right. the NHL. Um, and Edmonton and their team well, in, is not that. Their team is better too than Edmonton's. Like Edmonton, I think is there better. is some realistic. Like you have the yeah. best player and one of the other best players, but besides that, they're not nearly as. Toronto's a cup contending team or should be on paper mm. and honestly i think when it make that one series win that edmonton has helps them to not have the same stigma and mm-hmm. honestly i think missing the playoffs back-to-back years after they did that might might help that along as well like while like it feels like you're building back up after you miss the playoffs and then get back whereas toronto when your season ends the exact same way year after year after year after year after year then it feels like you're just stuck. Whereas Edmonton, if you're going up and down and up and down, like it's a, it's a little bit, I feel like it's a, that that's not going to, that stigma is not going to attach to you as easily. Um, but you're right. Like maybe we should start thinking of them in, in a similar light. I think we do to some extent, but maybe not a crazy amount. Um, so that's the playoffs are starting on Monday night. And again, we'll talk plenty more about that, but let's get into the Sabre season. That was the, some of the stats on the season, And one word to describe the 2021-2022 season. We'll get to that in just a second here on the Locked On Savers podcast. By the way, be sure to like and subscribe us uh, wherever you may be listening, including or watching on our YouTube channel. Uh, We are brought to you by Athletic Greens. I've used this product literally every day since they sent us along the the shakes that they send us and also the, the vitamin droplets that you just put a little dab in your coffee. You don't even taste it, and it gives you all the vitamin C, all the vitamin D, everything that you need. Uh, to get through the day. You're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole-source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens with Athletic Greens. It's lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto like me and Jordan, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. Athletic Greens, over 7,000 five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes and trusted by the leading health experts. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens. So episodes also brought to you by rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for for you or your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on your, their computer that you could be ordering at home yourself. And you save time, you save money when using rock auto, you can end up spending 30%, 50% or even a hundred percent more on the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. And when you do that, when you go to rockauto.com, See all the parts available, right? Locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Joe DiBiase at Sneaky Joe Sports. Jordan Hanskin at JR Hanskin here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. 
The Buffalo Sabres finished the 2021-2022 season with a record of 39, 32, 39, and 11. 75 points in 82 games played. That was good for fifth place in the Atlantic Division. It was good for the fifth wildcard spot in the conference uh, and 11th in the conference overall by the league standards, 24th out of uh, out of 32. One word to encapsulate the, the Sabre season. What would you go with? One word to describe the 2021-2022 season. I would go with reversal. And the reason I did that is because like I had an image of the Sabres ship like going in one direction. And somehow, magically, this team reversed, I think, the, the total vibes around the organization. Um, and I, I wanted to encapsulate that in one word. I was actually like Googling, like, is there a one word for turning a ship around? And I couldn't find one, so I went with reversal. Um, okay. If some if some scholar wants to share that with me, some <laughs> maritime scholar, um, <laughs> please. Uh, but like that that's that's the image that I had is that we we were like a, a ship that was off course that needed to turn around, or like, like maybe a cruise ship that's like it's a, it just seems like it's you cannot change course, like there's no way to turn it around. And somehow we stopped on a dime um, and we still are not a great team, but it's very obvious that we are no longer a bottom dweller well, there is, mm. there's no doubt about it in my mind that the Sabres are no longer, you know, a part of the, Oh, this is unwatchable. Um, mm. Cause they were the opposite of that. I thought they were extremely, if you want to say watchable, I'll say like they were entertained. They were an entertaining product. Now, sometimes they had, I could name a bunch of, ugh, that was a horrible performance. The Bruins game at the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty much every time they played the Panthers. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so like, I, I can already like list, I know a bunch of Lightning games are in there. So when they play against the, the cream of the crop, probably the three of the best teams in the league. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was brutal. But when we played against bad teams, we looked, pretty strong, especially in the final two months. Um, yeah. And I think that the team just got better and better. Um, and not just are, do they look the part, but they inspired, I, I think they inspired hope for the fan base. Um, I would expect there not to be a lot, uh, maybe, maybe there'll be empty seats, but I expect there to be a renewed enthusiasm for the team. Um, if they have a good off season here. Um, mm. I just, I really expect the fans to be like, I'll give these guys a chance. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with, I, before actually I go with my word, I'm looking at their schedule right now. And you're completely right about whenever they played inferior opponents, average to below average teams, they lost from February 25th on. They lost to one team that was not in a playoff spot. That's it. They lost to Winnipeg on march 30th other than that they they every team they played that was not a team in a playoff spot they won um and that's and winnipeg's a team that had a better record than the sabers i'm pretty sure i by a little bit yeah and yeah. remember they beat good teams too they beat minnesota they beat toronto three times in the final couple months stretch they beat pittsburgh they beat you know calgary in overtime i know that that game if you remember that one nothing overtime win they were kind of dominated, but th their goaltending <laughs> got them through. And then the, remember the dumb goal that Thompson ended up scoring. Um, uh, um, they beat, you know, Carolina. They beat uh, Chicago is not a very good team. Nashville, they beat down the stretch. So there were a lot of good teams that they beat as well. So the last two months of the season is really, I think, what kind of leads me to my word to describe the Sabres 2021-2022 season. And that is just hope. That is just hope, honestly. Like, it's kind of simple. It's not super creative, but, like, that that's kind of where I am. A new hope, if I could expand it. Like, oh. if we were doing Star Wars references. Like, honestly, like, a new hope would be, to me, like... Who's Skywalker? Who's Luke? Mm, good question. 
I, I, I mean, I already know Granado is going to be Obi Wan. I kind of want to so. give it to Donnie Meatball. So though, can does he have to be like Yoda or something? I think he, he would be. He would be Obi Wan. He'd be Obi Wan. Yeah, that's right. I haven't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> but like, right? Like, you know, <laughs> let's let's go. You know, let's just roll with the Star Wars reference for a little bit. If you're the Jedi between Episode Three and Episode Four, it's a dark, dark time. That's the Saber's drought. And then Episode Four shows up. Here's Tage Thompson. Here's Jeff Skinner. Here's Alex Tuck. You know, here's Owen Power and Daleen and like, boom, like, here we go. We're back, baby. And like, we start firing the gears back up. The machine starts working again. And I, that's where I'm at. I'm at hope. I think I have, we all have real reason to believe that this thing is actually going in the right direction. Whereas in past years, it's just like, all right, this season didn't work. Let's just, let's get it. Let's try it again next year with the same group. Let's try it again next year with the same group. And this time it actually feels like they're building towards something. And there are other young pieces that will be added to the pot as we go forward. And we'll talk about the Jack Quinns, the JJ Paterkas of the world. But I, I have real hope that this, this is actually going to work. Like if I were a betting man, I want to believe that the next time the Sabres make the playoffs, I think the guys that are their important players right now will be their important players. When that happens, I can foresee a team that is led by Darlene and power and Samuelson and Thompson and, and tuck and Krebs and cousins. Like I can envision a team with those guys being their best players, making the playoffs. Like I would bet on that happening. So I'm going to go with hope and the coach is a lot of it for me too. Like I, I, I was kind of always a, a proponent of Granado. Once we got a good look at him after Ralph Kruger had been fired. I think he came through in a big way this season. I think, He's got the team playing the right style. I think he, the big test for him will become what do you look like as a coach when you go from fun being the fun style and the developer to now you go from the developer to now it's time to win. And that's when I think Granado's next test will come. But I think he's passed every test to this point. So I have as much reason to believe that they have the right coach in place I mean, when's the last time we had that feeling? I mean, I guess we probably felt that way about Housley, right? During the 10-game win streak. I mean, Housley's one of those guys where we had every single person said, oh, yeah, this guy will be a good coach. Like he's, yeah. It's his time. And, like, he's got, like, the Botterill effect where, like, literally every single person said Botterill is going to be a great GM. Um, yeah. And it's... Uh, and he stunk. Now, Granado, though, I do think, like, like Housley never had... A, like the, I don't think in his tenure he didn't have as much optimism as mm. Granados had. Like I think before there was like the hope and expectation, but like yeah. when he actually did have to perform, like I don't think there was ever a moment where like man, this Phil Housley sure is good. Um, yeah. Whereas Granado, like I felt that way many times a season. I was a skeptic. I didn't think that it was the right move. I wanted to go outside the organization. Um, but yeah, he proved me wrong every step of the way. Um, and right away too, when he decided to, that he called up Tage Thompson and said, Hey, how, how would you want to play center? I, I listened, I read, uh, read a Tage Thompson Q and a in the athletic and Tage Thompson said, yeah, Granado called me and asked me how I would feel about playing center. And then Tage Thompson had played center in college, um, really most of his youth career. And he was like, yeah. I'm ready for that. I think that that will suit me better. And what a great decision that was. Um, yeah. It made him blossom into the player that we have now, where we think maybe a first line center. Um, mm -hmm. So like those two, I think are the biggest bright spots for me this season. Um, but yeah, like Granado hands down, like he, he did an amazing job, but you're right. Absolutely. Like when you mm -hmm. get to the second, this part is hard. Like this part right here where you go from being fun underdog where it's really easy. Everybody's, everybody's overlooking you next year. I don't think people are going to be overlooking the Sabres. I think that the Sabres are going to have a certain expectation. Um, I know my expectation for them is I don't know if they'll make the playoffs because our division is so good, mm -hmm. but they should be competing for a wild card spot. That should be the goal is they have competitive, important games in April. 
Amen. Uh, when we come back, we will look ahead to the off season a little bit. What, what, not more in generalities. Today's really more generalities. We'll have, you know, play again. We're going to do like a player exit interview series where we break down each player on the team. And then, you know me, I love turning the page to free agency. I love turning the page to trade ideas in the off season. Uh, so I'm excited to talk about what the Sabres plans will be, but we'll kind of go over that in generalities like, what do we want? We want them to be aggressive. Do we want them to spend a lot of money in free agency? They have to spend some money. Do we want trades? Do we want to just kind of let let the young kids come up and just let that be all that they're going to do? Craig Anderson is another guy that we'll talk about as well. And also, quick update on the Rochester Americans when we come back. Forgot to tease that earlier. There is There was good news on the Amherst front this weekend, and we'll tell you uh, where this their season is. Uh, the state of their season is after the regular season concluded uh, on Friday night. So that's coming up here in the Locked on Sabres podcast. Before we get to all of that, I want to remind you, we're brought to you by Built Bars. The best part about Built Bars is they're healthy and they're delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. It's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. 100% covered in real chocolate. That means Built Bar, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it. If you tried Built Puffs yet, that is my number one. I love the brownie batter, Built Puffs. It's like a brownie-flavored marshmallow covered in chocolate. It's incredible. There are 12 flavors of bars and 12 and puffs as well. Uh, Built Bar makes it easy, makes it so there's somewhat, something for everyone flavor-wise. And they're, again, healthy. They work for keto, four net carbs, so they're my breakfast like every day. Go to Built.com now to see all the flavors, banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, cookie dough. They got it all. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Jody Biasi, Jordan Hanskin, the Lockdown Savers Podcast. We're also brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting stats and information. You're going to be betting on the Stanley Cup playoffs? You got any futures? I've got my Stanley Cup bet on the Kings, but I'm a. I bet that in like January, and I'm not loving how that's going. I'm, I'm guessing I'm not winning the Stanley Cup uh, Kings bet. I got one on the Flames. Um, I like that's, good. Uh, that's right. I like their their bracket. Their yeah, their path. Uh, they're, they're, their I path like them. Hopefully, yeah, getting to Colorado, or hopefully the Avalanche get eliminated, and then mm-hmm. the Flames could have home ice. Um, but yeah, I, I like the odds of them being able to hopefully breeze through, and then yeah. you know take their chances. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they're the, I think they're the the best chance for like a non Atlantic mm-hmm. trio slash Colorado team to to win it. Oh uh, yeah, um, and hockey's I'll, weird. Hockey's weird. Somebody always goes down. They also got the easiest first round matchup, in my opinion. Dallas was the only team that made the playoffs that had a negative goal differential, minus eight. Calgary second in the league in goal differential with plus 85. That's a 93 goal difference in goal differential. The the Flames were literally more than one goal better per game than than their opponent, the Dallas Stars. I think they I think they did their job though. They they knocked out Jack. They did their job. They did proud of them. Thank you, Dallas. Uh, when we do some playoff predictions, I'm just a spoiler. I'm going to pick Calgary to sweep that series, no doubt. Uh, I'm also going to bet on them to win that series, and I'm going to do that over at betonline.net. It's not just betting there. They've got the information you need. They've got game previews, series previews, uh, and not just for hockey, but for basketball as well. we got the NBA playoffs going on. Uh, the NFL draft just got wrapped up. They, they were great with the NFL draft with like lines on like where Isaiah Spiller a running back in the third round ends up going. You could have checked that out at betonline.net. So head over to betonline where the game starts. Jody Biasi, Jordan Hanskin back here on the Lockdown Savers podcast. So very quickly on the uh, Rochester Americans, the update on the Amherst is a good one. We didn't think they were going to make the playoffs. They needed a lot of help in the last couple of games. And the Toronto Marlies, the team that was currently in the spot that the Amherst finished in, lost their last couple of games, kind of surprisingly, so that – the Amherst are still alive, and they are going to play in the play-in tournament that the AHL has been experimenting with. So they're going to play the Belleville Senators, the affiliate of the Ottawa Senators, of course, uh, in a three-game series. They're going to play Wednesday uh, in Rochester for Game 1, then Games 2 and 3, uh, if Game 3 is necessary, will be played in Belleville. So the winner 
of that three-game series between the Amherst and the Senators will go on to play Utica uh, in uh, in a best-of-five series thereafter. So this is good. Like, we wanted to see a playoff run from the Amherst, right? And I, I'm, I'm excited to continue to see Jack Quinn's season go on, J.J. Paterka's season go on, and Uka Pekka Lukanen's season go on. The problem with Lukanen is he got injured late in the season. He's going to miss one to two weeks, so he's going to miss the whole playing tournament. Um, but good news uh, from the Amherst standpoint. So we'll uh, we'll keep you updated on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We'll follow the Amherst into their Calder Cup playoff run. Uh, hopefully it goes pretty far. Uh, Sabres offseason is coming up. We've got free agency. We've got the trade market. We've got the draft. Uh, if you're wondering, the Sabres in the lottery uh, will have a 5% chance to win the first overall pick. They are currently slotted ninth. So if nobody jumps them from behind and they don't win one of those top picks, the Sabres will pick ninth. That's the most likely outcome for them. Um, what do we want from this offseason? Do we want aggressiveness? Do we want – what's the most interesting part to you? Is it the draft? Is it, you know, what they do in free agency? Is it what they do in the trade market? Or is it, you know, kind of following the Amherst development camp, Jack Quinn, Paterka? Like, what's the what's the thing that's got your interest the most with the Sabres offseason uh, on the mind? Um, I think it is the free agency slash trade aggressiveness. Um. I fully expect them to have spots available for Quinn and Paterka. Um, but I, I'm fascinated to see what they do, especially with goalie. Are they going to have a solid goaltending um, tandem? Are they going to hand it over to Uka Um, As they know that next year they should have Devin Levi signing or Eric Patillo signing. Mm -hmm. And so like it's or both. Um, so I think like goaltender is a very interest. They're in a very interesting spot where they could maybe sign a veteran to a one-year deal, bring back Craig Anderson or something like that. Um, or they could either give it to Lukanen for prove it, or they could say, no, you know what? let's hedge our bet here and we'll sign a good goalie or trade for a good goalie. Um, I think they have a lot of interesting possibilities there. Um, that and like how aggressive are they going to be when filling out their ranks? Because they could, they could, they definitely have an opportunity here to spend some money and add in some players that could make this roster look a lot more potent. Um, I think the Sabres still have a depth issue. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that they need to solve that um, and maybe get some new faces in here for, to fill out bottom six, um, another right-handed shot defenseman, stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's where I am too. Uh, I am thinking about free agency a lot. The Sabres have to spend about $25 million, I think, at the minimum for them to reach the cap floor for next season. And that doesn't include uh, – or no, maybe it does include. That, that number I've had in my head a while. I think that number does include – what they do with Victor Olofsson. Victor Olofsson is arbitration eligible. He's a restricted free agent. I'm guessing somewhere between four and five million is where he'll slot in. So if you count that, we're still talking about $20 million. So your Andre Burakovsky's uh, is, is like that second tier level free agent, I think will be in play for the Sabres. I mean, we could, we can have discussions about your Johnny Goudreau's and your Philip Forsberg's. I think those guys are going to price the Sabres out uh, and, probably wouldn't come here anyway, given that you got to have the proof in the pudding before I think you're able to get a, a free agent of that level, unless you're paying them again, like an obscene amount of money to convince them to come here. So, but, I, but those that second level free agent, your Burakovsky's, um, and then in that Braden Holpe is an idea that I like. I, I want to, I'm very excited to key in on some of those guys. Goaltender. I wonder though, if we'll even have those talks because I think we're penciling in UPL for one of the goalie spots for next year. What will the other one be? I like the idea of it being a guy they sign in free agency, but it still could be Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson, the Sabres reportedly want to bring back next season. He was okay this year. He was as good as I think you could have expected. I still want to see the Sabres do better. I think it'll be a mistake. Um, and all due respect to Craig Anderson, because he was fun to have this year. Uh, and I hope, you know, for the Sabres' sake that he retires and that it doesn't 
you know, it's not something where they have to kick him out the door. I don't think they're going to do that anyway. Anderson said in his uh, locker room cleanout interview, if this was five years ago when we were doing this, man, this would be a great thing for me to buy in and be long term. He said it was one of the most fun seasons he's had, but he's not sure if he'll be able to play another in the NHL. So he sounds like he's a little bit on the fence, but my guess is that he'll retire uh, the way he sounded there. Um, and again, I, I do for the Sabres sake, I hope that happens. N- not against UPL and Craig Anderson working as a duo, but I'd like to see them do a little bit better in net over, uh, over Craig Anderson. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, just a little synopsis of what we've got in store for us uh, going ahead through the, the off season. Um, but that's kind of, that's kind of, do we, I think we covered it for a little generic preview of the off season and a recap of the season. We'll have uh playoff predictions on our next episode. That'll be fun. You want to, do you want to guess what, when, before the show, I asked Joe. Oh, right. Who had the, who led the Sabres in plus minus his Jordan, favorite stat. He had a, a, my least favorite stat. Jordan had a trivia question <laughs> for me before we started here. Well, who had led the Sabres in plus minus? And I think my guess was kind of a, a half kidding one, which was Ethan, Ethan Prow, who scored for the Sabres. Remember earlier in the off season, earlier in the season, um, I'm going to go with Alex Tuck. He's going to be my guess because okay, I, I'm going to go with Alex Tuck. I don't really have a good reason why, but Tuck's my guess. Alex is Tuck is not right. He's one of the better ones as a forward Okay, on the team. On the right track, think of people that have not played for the team the entire season. So Alex Tuck was minus three. Um, uh, I mean, they're, they're a losing team, so they're, those are all going to be losses. This guy I'll, actually I'll... is in the positive. Ethan Prow is a good guess too, where he had Ethan Prow's was plus plus one. Plus one. (laughs) The goal he scored. He only played one game, I think. Um, Played in four, apparently. Peyton Krebs. Peyton Krebs. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, it's uh, a defenseman. Owen Power. Owen Power. Owen Power. Power. Plus three. Um, So, and I'm thinking about like that with Owen Power. Like, does that mean anything? And I don't think it means a lot, but I think it does mean something like, are the Sabres better with Owen Power in the lineup? And I think that's a certainly hell yes. <laughs> I just think like, um, if you had to take anything from a useless stat like that, it's that the Sabre, like Owen Power showing up for the Sabres, I thought they looked a lot better defensively. Um, mm-hmm. I think it made them more... Uh, strong on the back end. But we'll talk about that during his player exit interview. But I think we'll be, I hope we'll be pro Owen Power. Um, Definitely. Because, yeah. Uh, and one other news item is actually dropping while we're recording here uh, before we wrap here on Lockdown Sabres. We just talked about the Amherst. Their play-in tournament is coming up, and they just got a boost. The Sabres have sent Peyton Krebs and Matias Samuelson to Rochester. So they're going to get Krebs oh, and Sa- Samuelson in the AHL right now is going to be dominant. I mean, unless he's bored, oh, unless he's bored, <laughs> dude, he looked so good down the stretch. I- I'm excited to do his exit interview. Um, he looks so good. He is going to, I mean, he should be 30 minutes a night for the Amherst. Definitely. He looked, he looked um, him and Darlene. I-, I liked that idea of have Darlene on the offside. Yeah. Um, I thought that worked out well. So definitely. So we'll I, talk more Amherst. Power I, and Yoki Haru, I thought were a good pair together. Yeah, I I want to get to an Amherst game. I don't I don't know that I'll have be, have the chance to on Wednesday. That's going to be tough probably. But I hope I hope they make it to the next round just to get, who, who get to they, a game. Belleville Senators. The Belleville Where Senators. Where is Belleville? Was it Ontario? Is that near Ottawa? Uh, it's got to be right. Got to be. <laughs> Belleville the is HL. the HL. I have no idea where some of these teams are. Me neither. Uh, we should, that would be a fun geography game to do. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in Ontario. Um, here I, I can, I'll, I'll share the screen for our YouTube audience. Uh, how do I describe where this is? It's like on Lake Ontario, like kind of, you know, in the middle, like on like the North Lawrence middle, area, like right here, heading towards St. Lawrence. Yeah. So like between Kingston and Oshawa. That doesn't help people. That doesn't help people, does it? It's south. South of Ottawa. Okay. It's like in between Ottawa and Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you see it on the on the screen here? Right here. Yeah, this little yeah. box. It's like the 
a Saint Lawrence, uh, near Saint Lawrence, but not in Saint Lawrence. I, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe. Like, it's definitely one of those places that, like, it would be quicker to get there by by ferry than it would by by driving. It's not the Thousand Islands. It's like west of the Thousand Islands. Yeah, yeah, drivable, but I, mm, I don't think I will go there. So, how I, does this work? It's like a play-in series. Yeah, do, uh, do let me let me show you this this nonsense real quick before we go. The the, a, the AHL has is a playoff format. It's it's so weird. They're playing tournaments all over the place, and because there's different teams, a number of teams in every single division, every division has a different format. Um, it's annoying. So it's better to like show that. you the, even than to de- try to describe it. Here's the Amherst oh my, down here, oh the North. Of the so you have one play-in tournament in the North. You have two play-in tournaments in the Atlantic, one play-in in the Central, and you have three play-ins in the Pacific of the AHL. Uh, very confusing. But Rochester's is simple. Rochester's simple. They they win. They play Utica. It'd be worse is if they were a, in this. How, do you know how many games the play-in series three, is? Three. It's a best of three. Best of three. Oh, okay. Yeah. I kind of like it. I mean, yeah, more games. Um, so that's the AHL Calder Cup playoff uh, format. Yeah, Amherst, they have to win the best of three against Belleville. If they win, they'll play Utica. And what's kind of the first round, I don't know what they describe these things as. How um, valuable is competing for a championship in the AHL? I don't want to say it's not valuable. I don't want to no, say I it's think not it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it is. I mean, if, if you're at this point where you're not in the playoffs in the NHL, you might as well just do that. Yeah. 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 You know, listen, Use his history as a let's use history as a, as a as a sample here. The 0506 or the 0405 Rochester Americans went on a deep playoff run and they showed up and they were like they became the best team in the NHL. I know the Leafs like before the Leafs got good, the Marlies were like a force. So did they also lose in the first round every year though? In the AHL playoffs, uh, no, they did not. They plenty more. Them. Plenty more Leafs jokes coming your way uh, in the next couple of weeks, I hope, uh, as they play the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. I kind of want them to win. I kind of want them to win. Oh, well, how you had to save that right for the end. We'll get into that next episode. (laughs) Yeah, Nobody wants to see them win. Um, (laughs) We'll we'll talk uh, playoff predictions and what we've got for the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs uh, on our next episode. And then we will get full steam ahead into some player exit interviews uh, for the Buffalo Sabres. Our first player will be Tage Thompson. We're going to go through the forwards first and Thompson as the number one center in the leading goal scorer on this team will be the first man that we get to. So that's coming up in the next couple of days here on locked on Sabres. If you ever got a mailbag question, be sure to hit us up. I'm at sneaky Joe sports on Twitter. Jordan's at JR Hanskin while we have Twitter's before Elon shuts everything down. Uh, so feel free to hit us up there. Uh, this has been the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NHL. From first round matchups to each Stanley Cup playoff uh, series, Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. We will talk to you tomorrow here on Locked On Sabres.